The big models are on the top shelf. Sure, you can always get the little Tamiya Zeros and the Kitty Scales, and you can run along to the front counter with your little purchase and your little paints, but I wanted the big model. Up on the top shelf, yeah, that's where the big boys play. And I wanted the ritual. It all begins with a confident request, followed by one of those knowing nods by the clerk. You both share that moment, and he fetches that gilded stepladder. Listen to the excited whispers from the onlookers as he ascends that ladder, retrieves your prize, and gently places it in your warm embrace. Now raise it aloft, and let the lessers bow before you. Enjoy this moment. Soak it in, for you have made it, my friend. You are a top-shelf modeler and they'll speak of this day for years to come. Now I'm told I'm prone to exaggeration, so most or all of that didn't actually happen when I bought the new Ravel Blackbird, but it definitely is a top shelf model. It's a shelf sagger, a behemoth. The box is gargantuan. And no, I don't get to use that word every day. As big as a model is, the build is relatively straightforward. Actually, it goes together rather quickly because there are such massive pieces. And good news, there were no warped or misshaped parts in my kit. And that can be a bit of a risk when you have these big models with large wing and fuselage sections. Overall, the detail is decent on this kit and the parts breakdown makes sense, well, to me anyway, except for the nacelles. Yeah. They were a bit of a pain, but more on that in a minute. I went for the slightly more expensive version of the Revell kit because it came with a stand and some accessory engines. And the plan was to close off the gear bays, seal the canopy, and finish it as an in-flight model. And I'm happy to tell you that Revell did its homework and provided perfectly sized gear bay doors and canopies in order to close them without any gaps. And I can't say that about every other manufacturer out there. The cockpit is split into two sections. The first is for the pilot and the back is for the supervisor, the photographer, the pilot's good friend, navigator, all of the above, not too sure. In any case, the instrument panel pieces, as well as the side panels are extremely well detailed. Ravel supplies two instrument panel decals, but you really don't need them because the raised panel details are very nicely, or they paint very nicely, and uh, they're actually pretty close to being a good replica of the real thing. I painted mine in a bluish color like the reference photo showed. I used uh, Tamiya XF18 medium blue, and then I followed my standard instrument panel painting process, uh, masked off the black bits, sprayed a lick of NATO black. I dry brushed everything using Citadel gray paint. I then picked out the detail with a small brush and Tamiya acrylics. I then added a black wash. And as you can see, these could be painted up very nicely. Unfortunately for me, I lost a great deal of this detail when I closed the canopies, but I know it's there and I guess by virtue of this video, you do too. So there. Unlike the instrument panels, the bang seats leave a lot to be desired. So if you go for an open canopy, these would be good candidates for aftermarket pieces. I didn't worry too much about it because I wanted pilot figures in my Blackbird. And of course, Ravel does not supply these, but I did find a seated Blackbird pilot as a 3D print by Max Gruder. I've linked his site in the video description. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those cool kids who has a 3D printer, so I had to ask my buddy to print a few for me. And he had to play around with the size a little bit to make it look right in the seat, and I had to amputate the legs to get it to fit, but at least I could pose the arms to rest naturally on the control stick and side panel. And I used a few photos of U2 pilots as painting reference, as a painting reference because they use the same suit and helmet. 
Next up for my build sequence were the Blackbird's engines, and these are little gems. And since the exhausts of this plane are so large, they are well worth investing the time to paint well. I have a separate video for anyone interested in replicating the rather unique coloration of the Blackbird's engines. You can click on it above, or I'll have a link at the end of the video. Once these engines are complete, they tuck right up inside those nacelles. And this is where my build stalled. For some reason, Ravel decided to make the nacelle wing section in three pieces with a jagged join line. And try as I might, I just could not get all the joins to line up nicely with some gap without some gap or step. Ultimately, I glued and taped and clamped the parts in a way where at least the tops of the nacelles would be the closest to being perfect and I could work on filling, shaping, and rescribing the bottom sections. You know, I shouldn't complain too much because this was really the only hiccup in an otherwise straightforward build. And it wasn't all that bad because it was all fixable. Once the plane was together and primed, I had an absolute blast painting it. Using a few reference photos, I tried a few new techniques to replicate the look of a well-used in-service SR-71. And I show the entire painting and finishing process in a separate video that you can click above and see it. And I'll also have a link at the end of the video. Next up, decals. Now, as a general rule, I don't trust decals. They're certainly not kit decals. And yes, there are some good ones and sometimes I get lucky. But overall, I've been burned by kit decals too many times. So this time I got some Caracal decals for the Italiary or Italiary Testers SR71, but they fit fine on the Ravel kit. And did these decals behave? They sure did. I used very hot water to soften each one. I placed each decal in a big old pool of microset, and I gently worked the decal into the surface detail with a soft brush. They all settled in very nicely, and that was nice. I was happy. I wish all decals made me happy, but that's a whole other video. So with that, the plane was put on that very handy stand and those decorative engines were built and painted. Um, these are less complicated than they look. They're essentially tubes that come in four pieces. And I had some trouble hiding a couple of the seams and uh, where I couldn't hide them, I glued on some lead wire over that seam to make it look like extra piping. So please don't tell anyone I did that. And when the model is on its stand, it towers above all the others in the display case. Fitting, if you ask me. So yes, even if you don't get the top shelf ritual when you buy this thing, you'll sure be getting a top shelf model and it's a lot of fun to paint and finish. So until next time, keep building, keep trying new things, and keep taking risks with your build. The rewards come faster than you think.